Hey everyone, the next big content update for Albion Online is coming here in just a few days, Wild Blood. This update brings a lot of new content to the game with a new tracking system to craft for and face off against powerful, fantastical creatures, a whole new weapon line with shapeshifter weapons, awakened items which allow players to imbue weapons with unique characteristics, new potions, reworked islands and farming improvements, death recaps, and a variety of quality of life refinements. I know Albion Online has made some videos on each of these specifically, but I wanted to create this one for all video covering all these updates and what exactly they mean. So without further ado, let's hop into it. The core of this update revolves around the new tracking system. This system allows players the chance to track down the target to gain artifacts for crafting shapeshifter weapons, as well as ingredients for the new potions. I think the devs covered the goals of this update well in their dev post where they said, As the open world is the heart of Albion Online, tracking looks to add a new element to gameplay here. Players are challenged to search the open world in pursuit of a target. The focus is less on direct PvP combat, but rather to increase the amount of players roaming the open world. This encourages chance encounters for different sized groups. Tracking works by having a tracking kit, using it to find prints, and then roaming around the black zone, and the black zone only, to find your target to slay. These targets can be any of the primal beasts that you choose to track when you use your tracking kit, and they could be anywhere from tier 4 to tier 8. Lastly, you could do this in groups of either 1 to 3, so you can solo it, or go for the higher, stronger bosses for groups of 4 to 8. Shapeshifter Weapons A whole new line of weapons in the Hunter section of the Destiny board. These shapeshifter weapons are staff weapons that allow you to play like a ranged mage as you build up shift charges and allow yourself to shapeshift into various forms that have special stats and abilities based on which of the staff you are using. There will be these staffs available. The Blood Moon, Rootbound, Primal, Prowling Staff, Hellspawn, Runestone Golem, and Dawnbird. New and reworked potions. This update brings a range of new, powerful potions to the game, each one corresponding to the one of the wild beasts that can be tracked and bringing further new possibilities to combat and gathering in Albion. Existing potion effects have been reworked and all potions can now be enchanted up to level 3 using the new arcane extracts dropped by trackable creatures. The new potions, however, include the Tornado in a Bottle, which creates a whirlwind casting your enemies back, the Hellfire Potion, which creates a pit of raging flames where it lands. The Berserk Potion, where you fly into a rage with increased damage but reduced defense. And the Calming Potion, you turn invisible with a magical, everescent cloud. Awaken Items Awaken Items add a new level to Albion's player-driven world, giving players the chance to imbue items with unique characteristics. Pristine enchanted items can gain attunement points through PvE combat, which can be spent to add traits, improving certain attributes. But the more of these are added, the more difficult it becomes, meaning each awakened item will have a rare combination of stats, a unique part of the world of Albion. Island of Farming Improvements Players can now own multiple personal islands, with up to one island for each of Albion's cities. Island visuals have been completely reworked and upgraded to reflect the atmosphere, aesthetics, and biome of the host city. Personal islands have also gained unique farming bonuses tied to their city, and now offer multi-purpose plots that can hold either buildings or farms. Farming has also been improved and streamlined. Each animal now has a favorite food that offers bonus nutrition, encouraging trade between Albion's different cities and biomes. Ramai's dungeons across Albion's open world have been reworked and improved. New building blocks, quote unquote, significantly increase the variety of available dungeon layouts, and improved visuals and lighting give these dungeons a more dynamic look. Terrains blend together more effectively, and enemy spell indicators are clearer. And last but not least, adventurers now have a chance to encounter the Colossi and Titans from the Living Legacy Anniversary event in all randomized dungeons.
Death Recap. After being knocked down or killed, players now have the opportunity to see a recap of the events leading up to their defeat, offering both a quick overview and a more detailed breakdown. This recap shows the final enemy attacks, spells, and effects that were carried out over a specific time period. Overall, access to this critical information will help players improve, survive, and ultimately triumph in Albion's more intense combat settings. And last but not least, there were a variety of miscellaneous improvements where they improved and streamlined marketplace and black market actions, new mob camp variants added to the roads of Avalon, a new hardcore expedition chat channel, numerous optimizations for mobile and controllers, and much, much more. Either way, that is everything we're getting in the Wild Blood update. Another big update coming out this year. Uh, not too far long after we've had everything with the Nightfall Abbey and the Mist. So really awesome to see that they're continuing to add content to the game. I think this will hopefully work very well and add a lot more interesting combinations for both content and combat. If you like this content, be sure to like and subscribe and I'll catch you all next time. Peace out.